My brother and I have always been passionate about the outdoors. In early 2022, we had the opportunity to purchase about 20 acres of land in Central Texas. In this video, we'll be going over the initial planning for this land restoration project. The previous owner had been using the land for cattle grazing, and over time, this constant grazing, along with other factors, started to impact the biodiversity. One of our goals has been to improve local biodiversity and regenerate the land as much as possible. The purpose of this video is to break down some of our first steps along with some of our longer term goals. We've also included a link to a more detailed document provided by the Tex Parks and Wildlife Foundation, breaking down basic wildlife management and plan guidelines. This can be found in the notes of this video. Looking first at the types of plants and animals that should be present, we need to understand the ecoregion where the land was located. The property is situated closely to three different regions, which creates a really unique opportunity. The land is primarily within the post oak savanna ecoregion, but also borders the Blackland Prairie. The Blackland Prairie and post oak savanna landscapes were formed and maintained by two major forces, fires and the grazing of bison. Fire maintained these plant communities by suppressing invading woody species and stimulating the growth of local grasses. While the large herds of bison would consume large quantities of grasses, trample organic matter, and then distribute seeds into the disturbed soil. The grazing pressure was not constant, however, and the large herds would move on, allowing the range time to recover. The first steps of the restoration is to address the harmful species that are present, specifically the ants, the cedar, and the apone located at the base of the post oaks. The invasive ant colonies that are present outcompete the native species and can damage soil, preventing the natural growth. The cedar is also invasive and pulls water from the native plants, stunning their growth, specifically the nearby post oaks. The third plant that we're focusing on is the native yapone. Historically, these plants were cleared during wildfires, but without these fires, the plants have grown out of control, preventing natural grasses from having access to sunlight and water. After completing these initial steps, some of the next major objectives will be to develop the land's infrastructure. So this will first entail building a water tank and a large outdoor shed. The water tank will be approximately three quarters of an acre in size. Its main benefit will be to provide supplemental water for the native wildlife, along with habitat for native wetland plants to grow. The second main improvement will be to construct a large shed. This will help us with housing equipment for future projects and will help when constructing any major supplemental housing for local wildlife. After developing the land's infrastructure, we'll be clearing overgrowth such as yapone and mustang grape vines, followed by transplanting native plants, specifically grasses to help develop the natural soil moving forward. Thanks for watching this first video and make sure to follow us as we move through these next steps.